Um, what I learned about innovation I didn't know was specifically from the McKinsey Quarterly article, The Eight Essentials of Innovation, I learned that fresh creative insights are invaluable. But in our experience, many companies run into difficulty not from a scarcity of new ideas, but from the struggle to determine which ones to support and scale. I learned that companies don't struggle to generate these new ideas, but really it's they have, how, how do they analyze and determine which ones are worth financing and further pursuing. A lot of these problems are derived from the company's struggle to determine the risk of projects. Uh, so to assist with this process, they often develop boundary conditions for what they're looking for so the projects can be analyzed based on the company's goals. Uh, the article also gives a process for how we can determine if possible innovation is successful uh, by looking at three areas, a valuable problem to solve, a technology that enables a solution, and a business model that generates money from it. From the same article, uh, under the section Accelerate, I learned that many companies' greatest innovations come from the founders early on, and this is due to the fact that the company's in its early stages. They can bypass a lot of the bureaucracy and kind of checkpoints that may slow down innovations later, later in the company's growth cycle. Um, how creativity connects to entrepreneurship and innovation. It is because that creative, creativity is required to innovate on a process in a manner which has not been done before. This unique creative innovation provides for the competitive advantage which can be scaled by an entrepreneur to create or grow a successful business. Creative thinking, when applied to rigorous industry analysis, paves the way for organizations and founders to innovate and become su successful entrepreneurs. For example, in the Harvard Business Review article, The Discipline of Innovation, an example is given of the changing structure of the American healthcare industry. In the past couple of decades, there's been a rise of independent clinics and emergency centers. And some of these clinics open across regions and kind of open up all across the region using a model similar to almost franchising, which allows them to gain a lot of business over large regions without having to invest in one static hospital location. And so why is innovation important to society, companies, and organizations? Uh, chapter two from Joseph Schumpter's Gales of Creative Destruction states that all economic and social progress ultimately depends on new ideas that contest the introspection and inertia of the status quo with possibilities for change and improvement. Innovation allows companies, organizations to maintain or grow their market share over the years and decades. Without product or service innovation, it would be easy for competitors to replicate or improve amongst their products or services as non-innovative companies get driven out of business. An example of important innovation that benefits society, companies, and organizations was IBM's early computers that included applications for small to mid-sized organizations to do their payroll on. According to the HBR article, The Discipline of Innovation, before IBM released these machines, computers were viewed only uh, as being useful for advanced scientific calculations. After they released the machine with the practical business uh, applications, they became a leader in the computer industry, and which has spurred their company growth and large market share, which they still retain to this day. That small, same article also provides another example of Ford's innovation uh, benefiting their company as well as society's consumer lifestyle options. They originally produced a car model called the Ford Edsel, which they invested heavily in, did a lot of product research and design for, but the model failed terribly. Uh, but they realized the lifestyle was still wanted, and then they released the Mustang, which is one of their most popular models to this day. Um, two common approaches to innovation are incremental innovation and disruptive or radical innovation. Incremental innovation is described as minor improvements to an existing product or service, but disruptive innovation is innovation that makes previous technologies and solutions obsolete. Um, according to the mod module page, creativity, entrepreneurship, innovation moving forward, disruptive innovation generally is characterized by the inability to find an identifiable market in the early development stages. An example of incremental innovation is found in the HBR article, The Dis Disciple of Innovation, which talks about Alcorn, Alcon Laboratories in the 1960s, how one incremental innovation to a common cataract operation helped them gain a worldwide monopoly. Eye surgeons were consistently cutting a ligament at the end of the procedure, which the surgeons dreaded. But Alcon's co-founder 
added a preservative to an already well-known and discovered enzyme, which enabled the enzyme to dissolve the ligament without cutting it, as well as be preserved for, with a few months uh, shelf life after the fact. Uh, Nestle ended up later purchasing the company for a large sum. And so that obviously benefited um, the organizations of the hospitals, as well as the companies that patented and ended up selling to Nestle, as well as society who has often popular uh, cataract surgeries. Thank you.